Hey everyone, I want to talk to you about a Python package or a Python library called Selenium today. I've been learning a ton about Python lately as it's absolutely key to, I think, you know, a lot of development going going into the future. A lot of um, AI development is done within Python. And so I'm just investing a lot of my time just learning a whole lot more about it than I knew before. I had had very surface le level knowledge um, sometime, um, for, for some time, but, but recently in, in past months, probably over the last sort of six to nine months, I've really invested a lot of time. And Selenium is one uh, package I wanted to dive into more because of its web automation capabilities. So basically Selenium enables you to uh, automate web clicks or web interactions with a, with, a, with a web browser in a lot of cases, right? And so to test and to test out and learn a lot more about it, I decided to try and automate something that I, I wanted to see if I could do on, on Data Mentor, our, our, our own AI technology, right? Because where I think these, um, t uh, these packages or these libraries can go sort of next level is if, if you couple them with AI tools or um, AI APIs. Right. In this case, I just used did it did it on the web. But what you can do with Selenium is you can take information, collect it, analyze it with AI, augment it with AI, and then send it back somewhere. So there's just there's a whole ton of like automations that you can you can create. Right. So what in terms of like how how I how I learned it in this project, you'll see that like, this is quite quite a long project. Okay. But I myself did not write a single line of this. I was just copying and pasting from AI tools. I didn't, I used a variety of AI tools as well. I didn't just use one. I surrounded myself with ChatGPT, with Claude, um, with um, Data Mentor itself um, mm -hmm. to just continually give me code, help me out with code, help me understand code. Uh, and that's how I would f like fully recommend you do that as well. Um, you know, do not try these days to write all of this out. All you need to do, in my opinion, is have a solid understanding of what it is actually doing, right? And this is the same with any code right now, particularly Python code, right? Like you don't have to learn word by word, like how all of these things operate, but you just have to understand it because you don't need to write it anymore. You shouldn't have to write much Python code at all. Okay. I didn't write anything. I'm not writing any code in anything, any project I'm working on. Right? I'm just literally copying and pasting uh, and using natural language. Okay. What this does, by the way, and you know, I, 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 we may be able to get into like a, a, a demo of it, but I'll just show you like what it does so you can understand, you know, Selenium at its core, what it's actually doing. It's grabbing information from a spreadsheet. Okay, so in this case, I've got a whole lot of inputs, right, that I want to put into um, into a web page, web page. In this case, I just wanted to test out. Okay, there's ten different items here. I wanted to be able to loop. I wanted to loop through some items in a in a CSV file. Okay, and I wanted that loop to input those rows one by one into show you here into here. So an input box here, an input box here, uh, select one of these, select one of these, and then go create. And then I wanted it to reset the page and then go to the next row and do that and put it again and put it again, go to the next row, do it again until it had finished the entire loop there. Right. So think about how powerful that is in terms of a automation workflow. I mean, you could apply this to like anything, or like a whole range of different things, right? And what that enabled me to do in our projects area of Data Mentor is it would create a whole lot of projects for me very, very quickly, right? And um, you know, projects you can create massive like learning documents on on anything, um, you, like um, on anything really. This is a whole variety of di different things you can do. And I was just testing it with some Excel, some Excel ideas here, and um, that single prompt was then generating a very large document for me. And then I would go to the next prompt and that would generate another large document for me. So it was a way to create like my own learning materials very, very quickly, like very comprehensive learning materials, coupling it with this AI um, generation tool that, 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 um, that we've created as well. If I go and have a look and see if I can find one of these actually, um, might still actually be here. 
some ifs. Let's go some ifs. Let's see if we can find one. Yeah, okay, so it did work. It did work. Yeah, so you see here that it generated a six query document on mastering conditional summing and counting in Excel with sum ifs and average ifs. And that's exactly what I asked for. Um, I asked for here. So five or six. Maybe I changed the numbers on it at a, later, at a later point. But in any case, how you can, like, by the way, how you can start off um, by learning these things. There's, there's, I mean, you can use any AI tool, right? Like you use ChatGPT, you can use Claude, um, but you can also use like Data Mental here, right? And this is, we've set it up specifically for um, these sort of projects. And so like, let's just work through an example of how you can learn a little bit more about Selenium very quickly within here, right? Okay, so let's just see. And the generation of, of responses is so quick now. It's so quick. It's just mind-blowing, right? So browser automation, cross-browser support, multiple language support. So you can um, actually use multiple different languages here. But I mean, I just use Python. I, I don't know. I don't really need to use that that much. Flexible framework, headless browser testing. So this is where you can create a browser, which isn't your core browser. It's just some other random browser uh, that comes up specifically for the automations. But this is where this is where I, you know, I think you can use it most effectively as you're learning, as you're getting into it, entering data and forms and navigating between pages, right? So you can navigate, you know, from one page to another. Um, then you can use, you know, if you're doing that, right? If you if you, if you can, um, if you can get Selenium doing a lot of the navigation for you, and interacting with the web page, you can use other Python libraries to do certain like data extractions from the um, from the web pages, data manipulations of that data extraction. Like this, it's really endless, like once you sort of tie these all together, right? But you see here, this is how easy it is to get started. That is how easy it is to get started. I think I'm pretty sure from memory, I mean, I did this a few weeks ago, but this is all I did to get started. I copied this out, put it into Visual Studio Code, and then I just built on top of it. I just built it one by one, layer by layer, until I got to, you know, it's only it's only one script here, right? But uh, it got to, you know, close to 200, um, 200 lines of code. I mean, there's gaps and stuff, right? But, you know, a lot of um, a pretty, pretty substantial code base. But you see here that I put these little things in here to sort of separate it out, help me understand it. But in terms of a project to learn, it was a great use of a few hours of time, right? I understood, I understood a lot about Visual Studio, which I hadn't used that much a lot about how Python operates um, and particularly uh, Selenium, right? And there's many ways that we could, you know, make this even better. Now, one of the, one of the, one of the things like, there is a lot of Python code sitting out there on GitHub on sitting out there within uh, cookbooks and whole, whole range of different things, right? And one of the things that I always do, like by default, if I'm trying to learn something, I will come into here and you can do this in any AI tool and I recommend you do, do so. But what I do is I come in here and and I always, I, I have this kind of like playbook that I use, right? Sometimes it didn't, like sometimes I change the order in which I do it, but usually I'll go, okay, so I'll go to Code Explainer here, okay? Code Explainer. You know, this can take thousands of lines of code if you really want it to, right? Okay. And I said, uh, it just tells me Selenium package to interact with a web page. That's me bringing in all the modules, key components, data loading web driver setup, navigation and interaction, navigating to the login page, user login. So very detailed, right? Very detailed. This is this is a great way to learn, right? This is a this is almost a hack. This is a hack to learn things quickly. Okay? But I don't actually stop there. I keep going. I keep going. Create a thread. Okay? So I'm now um, I'm bringing all of my um, queries together. Okay? And then another tool I like is the logic visualizer. Okay, so if I wanted to understand this, okay, the reason I like this is it usually gives me a visual of what's actually going on. Uh, it hasn't in this case, which is a bit annoying. So it's given me some pseudocode instead, which is fine, which is fine. Pseudocode is also very good because it just 
gives me like good comments and um, sometimes it like writes it out really effectively for me. This this one usually gives me a bit of a visual, which I much prefer, but it hasn't in this case. But let's go to let's actually go to the pseudo code generator as well, which I like. But this is how I can understand unfamiliar code and anything very very quickly. Even even like I, I would say coming back to this after a while, like I haven't looked at this for a few weeks. And so coming back to it, if I just want a quick overview of what is actually going on, this is the way I do it, right? So you see here, import required libraries, I'm reading data from CSV, I'm setting up the web driver, logging to the website, navigating to the form page, iterating over the data rows in my spreadsheet, filling out the form, scroll if necessary, handle project type, handle tool selection, handle skill selection, handle language selection, boom, 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 done. Okay, so I now, you know what I said earlier, you don't have to write the code uh, really these days, you just need to understand it. This is my way, this is my way of how I'm understanding code really quickly, right? And then I can pause, I can pause the thread, come into threads and I have a full thread here, right? Full thread that I can read through I have it as a as a document that I can I can go back to I can reference later if I really want, um, but full document that I can um, I can review at any time. Right, I don't have to come in and create this again if I don't want, even though it doesn't take very long to actually create it. Cool. Okay, so that that in essence is what Selenium does. Okay, if you haven't started a project yet, try lock in one hour to run a project using Selenium just to get a feel for what can be done. Because when you add in like loops to the situation and error checks and, and other things, I think you'll be amazed at how much you could actually automate. It, it's, it's actually, it is crazy. It's absolutely crazy what you can automate um, from your day-to-day -day work, right? Like if you're doing something on a regular basis, like collecting uh, collecting data or inputting data, you know, you could save so much time by using Selenium and um, building up a script like I have done here, right? This is just one of thousands of applications of this, but just the, the singular Python library, right? So that's what I wanted to just focus on today. And, um, you know, highly, highly recommend to, um, to give it a go give it a go to to see what uh, what you can achieve as well i'm keen to see what what you have done in the past or what you um, um do do get into once you view this video i'd be really interested to see what you think you can automate you could probably automate a ton of things around like social media interactions um yeah even even data acquisition you know, data acquisition is a big thing that's happening in the world right now. Like, data is everything. And so, you know, there's probably a lot you can do around that to get custom data sets. Um, yeah. So, yeah, particularly if things are behind, behind like logins as well, like this, this is how you enable your machine to actually get into a site where there, where there might be custom things that you can extract and you don't actually have to be there. You don't actually have to be physically doing it. So yeah, plenty of ideas, um, plenty of ideas that um, that you could utilize. I mean, one way you can um, one way you can find ideas is to come in here and go. I want to build app. Is let's just ask AI and see what it actually comes back with. Test automation tools, automation automation of web applications. Functionality works after updates. Verify the basic functionality. Web data extraction apps. Yep. So market research, competitor analysis. You know, one of the like actually one of the amazing things that I thought of when I was building this was. You know, you could use AI vision models within within the Selenium um, scripts, right? Because instead of you know, you could navigate to a website, take a screenshot of the website, whatever it is, 
send that to a, a vision app. Um, like um, most of the APIs have a multimodal now. Um, and you could get an outline of what, what it sees. So tons of application there, particularly around market research, competitor analysis, right? Um, yeah, I think, I think there's going to be some amazing apps built around that. Automated reporting dashboard, build, build dashboards that update all information by logging into web application and retrieving metrics, right? So data acquisition, I think that's a big one. Social media metrics, yep. E-commerce automation, acceptance testing tools. So then it can be employed to craft UAT applications where end users interact with a web application under test. Okay. Not something I'm that familiar with. Cool. Example goes from that. Boom. Okay, so plenty of ideas, all right? And then I think, we, I mean, we could go deeper if we really want to. Okay, I'm going to round out that. Hopefully that gives you some good, um, good ideas. All about you know, learning new things these days. I think there's just enormous opportunities opening up for the enterprising individual, the enterprising business, right? It's just about getting, investing, um, investing the time, being intellectually curious. There's, there's, there's some pretty amazing things that can be done, right? And you can do so much more than you ever thought possible. That is one thing that I just want to re reiterate a hundred times. It is, it is crazy and mind blowing what you can do these days. So just got to find a way. Okay. Thanks all. Speak to you soon.